Welcome to episode three of our Subaru engine build series presented by Valvoline. Today we're going to assemble the long block. If you guys have been following along so far, you'll recognize Nam. We're here at NV Auto and it appears to be step one is head studs. Yeah, we're going to throw these ARP head studs in there first, get them uh, tightened down before we put the head caskets in the heads on. All right. Let's see uh, you work your magic here. All right, Nam, five to six done. You're almost done the sixth one here. Is there a technique involved in installing these that you will, you want to share with the internet? So ARP tells you to bring these bolts in uh, until they bottom out, uh, finger tight. I've seen a lot of other builders, uh, where I've disassembled a lot of engines where the bolts have come out from the block okay. and not come out from the head. So what I like to do and my practice is that I like to tighten them down, get them to about uh, finger tight and then just give it, just, I mean not even a lot of pressure, just get it till it, make sure it bottoms out. Yeah. And then I like to look at all the studs, make sure they're all at the right angle, yeah. all evenly before I put the bolt, uh, before I put the heads on. We are using these JE Pro Seal head gaskets. It is a multi-layer steel gasket and it's worth mentioning that all the layers in uh, Pro Seal gaskets are stainless steel. They also have a really cool coating on them which is uh, looks kind of rubbery and that's because one of the layers, the Viton layer, is a rubber-like substance. Also has a silicone layer on top of it which helps it seal against fluids, oil and coolant obviously. And what else can I tell you? It's got really nice embossment on it. It's got like raised and lowered areas and the way they radius those embossments is a very smooth contour which releases any kind of like stress points so it, it gives you a better seal. So Nam, is there a, a secret to installing these? It looks like the way they're cut out, it's there's really only one way they can go on. They are similar, I mean, uh, they're pretty much the same gasket left and right, but you gotta, like I said uh, before, you gotta make sure that the oil gallery isn't uh, covered and it's perfectly sealed with the gasket, as you can see here. And you gotta make sure it seats perfectly well over the dowels as well before putting the heads on. Time to put on cylinder head number one here. A lot of pressure. Just gotta make sure we get it lined, lined up, up just with right. the ARPs. Set them down. Make sure that they sit inside the dowels. Let's make sure that the gasket is seated properly. I should mention these are not stock cylinder heads. As you will recall from the first episode, these had badly damaged valve seats. So we sent these down to Dave Localio at Head Game Motorworks in New Jersey, and he did a complete rework on them, including replacing those valve seats. But he's also done his pocket port job on them, which is a porting job to the uh, underside of the valve seats and the short radius side of the pocket. He's also enlarged the bowl area based on the valve side to increase the CS, CS, CFM of, or flow of the heads. He says these are really good for about four to 600 horsepower, which is sort of our target area. We're thinking maybe 500 horse. He's also put all of GSC Power Division's goodies in here. So we have their stage one cams, we have their stock size valves, we have their beehive springs and their titanium retainers. So that complete kit is designed to work together to give us the, the performance at high RPM that we want. And they should also apparently improve spool of the turbo. So it's a pretty killer head package, also very affordably priced, I think. So uh, go, check it, go check him out on the internet. All right, Nam, now that we've got the head sitting on here, what's next? We're gonna put the head stud nuts and washers in there and we're gonna torque these down. All right. Looks like you got some uh, special paste out here, Nam. What's going on? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna use the ARP uh, fastener assembly lubricant and apply some on both sides of the washer and on the threads of the studs uh, before we torque them down as what ARP wants us to do. So with the sequence, we're going to follow Subaru's direction. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six in that order. And we're going to go with what ARP wants is three steps. So we're going to go 30 foot pounds, 60 foot pounds, and then 90 foot pounds at the end. Now that Nam's finished torquing down the heads, it's time for my favorite part of en every engine build. And that is the bump sticks, the camshafts. Look at these angry stage one GSC cams. This motor revs to 8200 RPM stock and with these bad boys and their beehive valve springs, we're going to 9K everybody. All right, Nam, you've lubed it up here. We're ready to put these in there. Yeah, we've applied some assembly lube and now we're gonna apply the left intake cam 
in the left cylinder head on the intake side. All right, time to put the cam caps on, and it looks like you've used a little uh, gray sealant on there. Yeah, so we applied some uh, assembly loop on the inside cam journos, and we're gonna use some sealer around the outside caps here, and we only put them on the outside caps on this side here and all along the top here. And so now that these bolts are all finger tight, what I like to do is I like to torque these back ones to 174 inch pounds and the front ones to 84 inch pounds. So now that the cams are all torqued down, we want to make sure that the cams are spinning freely and we are done torquing this side of the head. All right, that means it's time to spin this motor around and we'll do the other side. Next step is to install the oil pan and rather than using the stock pan we've actually stepped up to this larger capacity Killer B Motorsports pan. And I guess the first step in this process is to install the pickup. And the pickup in the windage tray and then we'll go ahead and install the pan when we get there. And uh, one of the cool things is Killer B includes their own pickup which is a much more robust unit than the, the stock one. Apparently the factory ones are prone to failing down around here and when you drop your pickup in the pan bad things are going to happen to your motor. So this is a nice little upgrade for us. Here's our Killer B windage tray. I guess it just drop it in there randomly now. Just, drop we'll just, it in just there. put it in. I, I see some holes that I can line that up with. Yeah, so they'll line up to the factory holes on the bottom of the block. And we'll start the two bolts in the back first and then we'll get the oil pickup on. Start torquing that down and then we'll get ready for the oil pan. Look at this cast aluminum masterpiece. This is the Killer B V4 pan that has an increase in capacity of 1.3 quarts. That's 30% more than the stock pan. As you can see, it's also got some nice baffling in it. It has a M20 for your standard drain hole and it also has a half inch NPT on here for say a oil temp sensor or something along those lines. And it's got this magical port on here which I'm gonna assume is for a dipstick. All right, Nam, what do we have to do to seal this puppy up? We so use... we're going to use some sealer on here. Yep. After we get the block clean and the pan clean, and then we'll put it down with Torque to spec. She's all treated with your sealant? Yep. So we're going to put it in, install the new Killer B bolts that they've supplied. That is a wrap on torquing down our Killer B pan. And I guess that's a wrap on this episode, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. It's exciting to see this motor come together. Next episode, we're going to do everything else to make this a complete long block. So timing, what else? Intake timing, manifold. valve cover gaskets, uh, I mean valve covers, water pump, oil pump, timing, and then throw the intake manifold on. Nice. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. And thank you, Valvoline, for supporting this series. It's really exciting to build a motor like this. Matter of fact, be sure to check out teamvalvoline.com for more technical information or information about all their oil products, which we'll be showing you in the next episode.